On this episode, we talk about app launches, we talk about health and wellness professionals, and we talk about fruit and vegetable stands. Let me see. And then here. Yep. Right. And then it goes? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that update, but I haven't played with it. That's cool. So, like, when I. You can draw on it like Snapchat? Yeah, so if I give her, like, a mustache, like I'm doing right now. Yep. Let's go. Classic Gary. 206? 206. You have 20 minutes. What's up, everybody? This is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 206 of the Ask Gary V Show. India, D Rock on the scope, uh, Garrett Green in the house, Tyler. I mean, this is a full house. Just missing Uncle Jesse. <laughs> Feeling pretty good. Feel ready. I, I, I saw one. You know, it's funny. Uh, I've got a, I've got an interesting travel schedule tomorrow. The, the 3 a.m. wake up call. The 4, the 4 a.m. flight, right? Uh, but but I uh, was really excited. Saw some of the comments come through on episode 205. People felt that I was in good form because I'd been out of the saddle, and I feel I actually feel even stronger for episode 206. So India, with that, like you know, I, I feel like we should go classic route here, classic. just classic. Like we'll do our little show thing. Yeah. Oh, I still haven't watched that. Oh my god. I want to watch that right after this. Um, <laughs> we're gonna do our, we're gonna do our li- we're gonna do a little show it. thing, yeah. and then we're just gonna we're just gonna ask questions. Okay. I'm gonna give answers. That are gonna make an impact. Cool. Great. So you ready? I'm ready. Let's get into the show. Very nice. All right, first one. By the way, real quick before we get into the show, I, I, this is a, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. I've been thinking about how to address this. You guys are so sweet. Let me make a very strong statement. I'm always so humbled and flattered and my ego is scratched in such a good way, I'm always willing to take a selfie. So many of you, like, obviously with the virality on Facebook and stuff of that nature, I can feel the heat. You you see what's going on when we're doing Daily V. So many of you are looking at me and then tweeting, like, I wish I stopped and said hi. Like, I'm, like, you can never bother me. I'm so flattered. I'm always ready to do it. It's it's, uh, an incredible accomplishment. I feel incredible about it. And just I feel a lot of people lately have been like eyeing me up and tweeting it and I see them and I knew that they like recognized me and I wish they stopped. I would have loved to give some daps, say thank you, take a picture. So how about the other day when I when the guy's phone died? Do you know about this? You don't know about this. I was just talking to you. D-Rock told you about this? Oh, some guy's phone died when he like came up. I took it on mine and emailed it to him. Very sweet. Yeah. I'm a sweet guy, India. Mikkel asks, do you ever pick and choose which clients you work with based on how they do their business? Yes and no. Um, so the answer is yes, um, but many times I don't. So, you know, I'm running a business. I'm not, uh, uh, and now, I would, you know, for example, we have had big clients potentially come through here which I thought were in an industry that would cause too much, in a, in a, and very honestly, in a politically correct world, in a world that we have a lot of, you know, I don't want to call it liberal thinkers, but like there's absolutely things that you have to do as a CEO that you make decisions on who you do business with based on what you think is in the best interest of your business. For me, it goes in reverse in three orders. What's the best interest for everybody? Like, like my responsibility is to everybody here, um, which then is in essence the logo, and then my feelings are third. And so I've actually not taken on business that I thought would not be in the best interest of the feelings and emotions and thoughts and strategies of my employees, um, though they might not have 100,000% aligned with me. Let's say I was 80% there, but I felt the collective was 100% there, and I take that responsibility. And so, you know, I never judge based on how they run their social media or marketing, because that's what we're there to fix, if that's where Mikhail Meikle was going. Um, 
And I don't blame company, like, you know, you could have one rogue CEO that makes this wine company a bad company, but then if she or he is fired, then they are a good company. So I also try to quantify that. But yeah, it's run through my mind. I've absolutely made decisions. Look, the people you surround yourself with is an indicator to who you are. I mean, it's just the truth. And so my clients are a representation of who I am. But I have no problem having alcoholic brands, sugar water. Like, these are not things that scare me. I'm not hypersensitive. But if you make, you know, bombs, uh, or, and that's not a real life example, uh, or if you're the Patriots. <laughs> like, for example, I would never take the Patriots as a client. No shot. Yeah. Buddy asks, what's your advice for healthcare docs who want to add value using social media to promote wellness and attract ideal patients? This is good. I'm glad you asked this question. I actually think this is something we need to challenge ourselves on the show. Um, oh, here's something that the audience can do. I don't know if you guys heard, but I have a new search engine. Both the questions and answers. Stefan, pop it up. Good. Uh, commercial time, put it right here. I want it. Okay. Um, it's unbelievable. Like you have a lot of questions for me. They've all been answered, or, or at least the ones on the show, and now they're very searchable. If you are part of the Vayner Nation, the Vaniacs out there, if you search something that you got zero results for, please tweet me, and I'll start passing it on to you. Like, I feel like I'm really happy you asked this question because it's getting to some genres. And I think I want to go more profession-based in the 200s. I want to do more, I'm a contractor. I'm a, so please, actually, can we all stand up and rise? I haven't been doing this consistently and I haven't been asking you. If you please ask a more specific question to your industry right now. Use the hashtag AskGaryVee. Throw that up here, Savannah, as well. A little editing for you. Plus I love double checking. Plus I love when you forget and I get mad. Um, and, um, and so, uh, that's a great question. So that question is based, I'm a health, I want to make sure I got that one little piece because I went on a tangent. Yeah, so the advice for healthcare doctors that want to add value using social media to promote wellness and attract ideal patients. So, you know, I think you go long tail. Um, what's the name? His name is Buddy. Buddy. Um, you know, Buddy, I think it's a really important thing to actually go long tail and I think one of the biggest things that I mean by that, lawyers, real estate agents, insurance brokers, wine guys, perfect timing, the reason this popped, this old show that I used to do, the reason it popped was because I was really giving my best advice. And I didn't care if you came to Wine Library and bought this or you bought it somewhere else, I was trying to provide you value. As long as you care more about the first part of your question than the second part of your question, you will win. As long as you want to provide more value than you want customers, you will win. As long as that's 51 and the second part of your question is 49, you will win. So what does that mean? That means you put out on video things that might actually solve people's complete problems with them not ever coming into your ecosystem and becoming a client. So many people in marketing, so many people in information and services want to give you a little taste so that you then come into their full circle. I have been very successful in going the other route which is giving so much and then using that equity, that guilt, that word of mouth to be the gateway to business. So I would tell you, buddy, that you need to put out the best advice and content that you can. That your videos and pictures and audio and written words need to be, here's a scenario, here's exactly what you should do. And that might be remedied on over the counter, that might be remedied with some old western point of view, that might be remedied by somebody going to a, a clinic or a place that has nothing to do with you and you have to be okay with that. If you are not okay with that, all of your actions, aka all of your content, will feel that way to all the end consumers and then they will feel that it is transactional or that it is actually a gateway. So many of you watch this show because I think you deeply inherently, whether you understand it or not, realize I'm trying to put out the best content I can here and there is no comma something. There is no this ends or in the middle of it, I'm trying to sign you up for my school or this and that. Yes, every three years and we just went through it or two years, you'll hear from me on like, buy my book, buy my book, but you're not, we have, I mean, Jesus, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I've, been, I've even been less on book selling the last 45 days than I expected. I've been zero. I think I did something the other day, to, like, I mean, like, like one. Like, so I think your actions speak louder than your words. So one more time, I want to hear the way the question's framed. Advice for healthcare doctors that want to add value using social media. Stop for a second. Do that. I don't think if you have advice, here's the advice. Make pictures, videos, and written words and audio pieces of content that bring people value. If you're a good health professional, you'll know what to do. Because I really understand wine, I knew what to do. The comma part needs to be the trust that that content is actually gonna bring you what you actually want to happen, 
which was the second part of the question. You're not watching the Ask Gary V show because you don't care about the business ramifications. This is a business show, right? It just happens to be a business show that is doing business in a higher manner than the rest of the market. How they how they feeling about it? The I, scope. I like it. Do they know that you're holding it? Yeah. Do they know the famous D Rock is your unbelievable? You should be making movie skills that are holding this. He's fancy. You two. You two. You two. No, no. You two. You two are super fancy. What? No, I've never been on jet. Yeah, so it's true. D Rock is very fancy, but India, you get. St- you get stopped everywhere. Yeah. You take selfies. You're, 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 you know, we haven't been doing Ask Gary Vee and Daily Vee's material, so DRock's clearly closed the gap on the fame race. No, but you know what? Stefan, have, have Zach make a little chart for me. I want a real good design here right now. Put it right here. I want a fame graph with India's face and DRock. And like, I think we should bring it up once every eight or nine shows and see who's winning <laughs> in the fame. You know. Everywhere. Oh, but that might be because he's hustling harder. Maybe. Yeah, but you, you, you got the engagement. True, but I don't think that my, I think that your brand translates better to his brand. Like I feel like the crossover is What about when I saw you in the wild on Snapchat? Yeah, that's <laughs> so surprising to watch your Snapchat. And see that. All right, let's move it. Patrick asks, what did you learn selling baseball cards that I could apply to selling vegetables at my first farmer's market coming up? Patrick, this is amazing. Watch their eyes. That's what I learned in baseball cards. As you guys now know, or if you don't know, if you go to my website right now, link it, here, you got a lot of work to do. This is going to come out next week. Um, I day trade attention and build businesses. When you day trade attention, eyes and ears are very important. What I learned, and this is, by the way, this is the stereo. I would literally be at a baseball card show and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint it for you because it's really important. I would literally, like, I would get there at 6, 7 a.m. The show would open at 9, 7, 8 a.m. And I would have my table and I would sit there for hours. Garrett, pay attention. And I would sit there for hours and I would do this and then this and then this and I would look and I'd come around and I'll never forget this. I'd always come around. I'd try to understand it from their perspective. I would pay attention to what the other dealers were doing and so I'd be like, okay, he has a lot of boxes here so like if I go white space here, I gave a lot. I'm a kid. I'm 13, I'm 14 and I'm thinking about how would you walk through this mall and if you just saw that guy's table, what does my table have to do so that you're not, you know, there's 80 tables here. What would you have to see there that would then make this stand out in the context of that and that? And then what could I do? And if you look at this table, this is the big punchline, right? The orange thing. So let's call that the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. Do I put it in the middle but then it's hidden by all the other cards? Do I put a top left corner? And it's funny, even as a kid, and this is how I understand websites, I understood that that's how people read. So I would put my flashiest, hardest core, hottest items in the top left corner because I understood that that's how the eye would look at it and be like, whoa, there's stuff here. You know, to me, that's a really interesting insight to how I roll. It's how I think about the first five seconds of this video when you watch it. It's how I think about my tweets. It's, the, it's how I think about my opening line when I give a keynote speech that all of you have seen and the cliche, how many people know who I am, who don't know who I am, everybody raises their hands, oh shit, that hurts, ha ha ha, humility because I'm about to deploy a lot of ego. So, you know, for all my, yeah, blah, blah, I'm quite calculated and that's how I thought about it. And so what I would tell you, Patrick, is it? Patrick, pay attention to the eyes. Understand the context. Think about the parking lot flow of the vegetable market and think about what most people walk through and how do you have and do you have a vegetable that nobody else has? Uh, Do you have a better price on something that nobody else has? Understand what they just saw. Understand where they're going. Where's the bathrooms and the porta potties? Where's the honey lady? Like there's the sausage guy. Like I'm the only person that sells pickles in this entire row. Think, think, think. And then when you sit down and watch in your first table, just watch. That's all I did. I was like a weird, I looked like a weird dude probably because I would just watch. And I would watch like a goddamn hawk. And I would just watch and see their eyes and then adjust and be like maybe that wasn't working. Counterpunching their attention. That was cool, right? You like that the whole like, that was neat, right? You like that because that was like, I tend to be very clouds, but that was very dirt. I don't go dirt a lot. Like as my, I try to go dirt for you guys, but clouds is how I win. But like I got a lot more dirt in me than you think. That's why I think the industry specific questions are good too. Good observation, India. Nope. <laughs> 
That was the graph of fame. That was the graph of fame. Good job to stay along. I was struggling looking at the jab to jab right hook because it's essentially like the message in front of it, stand, like your content standing out, just like the table. That's right. It's true. It's true. Apple Pie Parties asks, how do you know if you should continue to bootstrap or bite the bullet and accept investor funding? APP, this is a tough question for everybody. Every situation is different. This is why it's, I struggle with dirt because the truth is I can't give you an answer without really knowing your business or knowing you. Every one of you that's sitting there deciding between and do I take on investment or do I continue to bootstrap has so many other variables. Where are you in your personal relationship? How sick and tired of you are you of bootstrapping? You know, how big of a business do you have? Way too many of you are taking on investment when your business can only be worth three to five million dollars and then you're giving up such a big percentage and your patience over three to five years would have made you a lot more money than you getting a percentage of the only three to five million top line revenue business that you have. So, you know, the truth is India that every business has its own variables. What I will tell you is that I think money will get tight soon. I think we've been living through fairly good times even though most people don't realize that, especially in startup culture, though the mass economics in America are okay. The startup culture, the people that are building businesses in, a sh- in an environment that would watch a show like this um, have had it pretty good. Um, and uh, and I, think that, um, I think that will dry up shortly. And so I think, that, um, I think that if you need the money, you should go and get it immediately. If you don't need the money and it's more about do I accelerate or do I keep grinding, I think that comes down to the individual and their situations at home, life, um, their level of patience, how much they enjoy the process. I kind of alluded to like almost sabotaging myself on Daily V the other day because I love the process so much. So I hold off on gratification. Um. Devin asks, how crucial do you think an app's launch is? Product hunt? That's a really good question. Again, a layered question. I, uh, I Ultimately, I think if you make a great product, the answer is not that much. My Snapchat's launch was non-existent. There was no freaking Snapchat launch party. There was no like big to do. You know, like like you know Instagram because Sistrom was in the ecosystem. He did get the Kevin Roses and the Ferrises and things of that nature. But you know, and that was just in a small pie because the tech space is so small. I would argue stunningly little. I think we've seen a ton of people have the big party, the big hype. You know, like we're gonna do it. Look at Title, even with its recent success with some exclusives. I'm not bullish on that in the long term. Um, I mean, they, you know, they had Madonna and Hove, and everybody's there, and like so. I think way too many people overpromise and underdeliver. Um, I think way too many people try to sell on the sizzle and not the steak. And I would say net net, if we look at you know, Uber, I was there. There's no, there's no big launch. It just worked right away. I think if we look at the top 150 apps. You know, like, no, musically, like, what was the launch for music, like, right? Like, so I, I would actually argue that most of the apps that are successful um, didn't have some big launch. Um, early momentum is good, um, but we've seen early momentum fade very quickly. Um, I, I think your thesis of your business has to matter. I think at the end of the day, this is absolutely tortoise and hare, um, and I think the turtle wins every time. And so um, I think that, uh, I think it has a lot to do with ego, and it feels really good in that first year and you're a founder and you're cool and you're hot and you might be on the cover of a magazine and being featured on TechCrunch. But I, I just don't think it's how you start. I think it's how you finish. And, and very honestly, I would tell you that most of my confidence and most of this it thing that you guys feel and most of this swag or whatever the hell you want to call it comes from me knowing what's going to happen when I'm 70, not what's happening right now. I feel like I'm gonna be B70 and watch this moment one day. And I'm gonna be like, man, I was so young. <laughs> Had so much in front of me. I thought I was old at 40, but I was so young. Good show. Uh, yes. Uh, DVB canceled for tonight. What are you doing right now? I'm yeah. still in the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tyler with a rookie mistake. I don't know how you and AJ rolled, but I'm still in show mode here, Ty. Uh, question of the day, what's the biggest mistake that you made recently? You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. What's up guys, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, please, do I get to link it up anywhere? Is it like in here? Or is it down below? Is it in print or is it in my video? Uh, no, it'll be, it'll be down to your left. It's here, down to my left? Like right here there's a button? For them to subscribe to my YouTube uh, video? A little bug, yeah. yeah, it's a little buggy thing? Yeah. That's right guys, click this! 
That's right, use that. <laughs>